Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we are going to discuss about vector autoregressive models in EVMs. In case of economics and finance, it is very difficult to draw a line of demarcation between the dependent and independent variable. Or in other words, to, to define that this particular variable will be working as a dependent or independent, it's quite difficult. Say for example, the inflation may be affecting the GDP, GDP may be affecting the exports and exports may be again, in, uh, again affecting the inflation and therefore it is a vicious circle which is working. Now, this particular thing was heavily criticized by Sims in 1980. According to, according to Sims in 1980, there should not be any distinction between endogenous and exogenous variable. Once this distinction is abandoned, all the variables are treated as endogenous. This means that in its general reduced form, each equation has the same set of regressions which leads to the development of war models. There are some basic things which you should remember in estimating war models in EQ. First, it's an autoregressive. That is the presence of lagged value of the dependent variables on right hand side of the equation. It means that every dependent variable has its own lag as independent variable on right hand side. Let's try to see this. Yt is a dependent and yt minus 1, which is its lag, is considered here as an independent. Xt and its own lag, zt and zt minus 1. Okay, this is the first thing which you should see. The second is, it's a vector, which can, uh, that's a system, contains vector of two or more variables. War model is constructed only if the, uh, if the variables are integrated of order 1. That is, this uh, variables should be stationary at first difference. If the variables are co-integrated, co construct both short run and long run models. Short run is a war model and long run is a VECM model. If the models are not co-integrated, construct only short run models. All the variables in the systems are endogenous and they, there is no concept of exogenous variable. This is an entire system of equations which we are talking about in the second. It contains a vector of two or more variables. We assume here that u1 t, u2 t, u3 t are uncorrelated white noise error terms. u1 t is same as e1 t, e2 t and e3 t. Yt, xt and zt are stationary at first difference. The dependent for, uh, for variable is a function of its own lagged value and the lagged value of other variables. Var must be specified in levels and hence var in differences would be the misspecification. The error terms in var are stochastic, often called as shocks or innovations or impulses. The var model is estimated with the help of OLS. To decide the empirical lag length in war model is very crucial because if you in include too many lags in the model, we lose the degree of freedom, the coefficients become statistically insignificant and it, it gives rise to the multicollinearity. On the other side, if you specify too few lags, then there will be a specification errors. Optimal lags are selected on the basis of information criteria that is an Akaike information criteria, Squats criteria or Hennen-Kainen, Hennen-Quinn information criteria. Interpretation of coefficients in VAR model is quite simple as OLS. In case of VAR model, there are some advantages which econometricians can leverage upon. The econometricians does not have to worry about which variables are endogenous or which is exogenous. Second, estimation is quite as simple as OLS. Third, the forecast made in VAR model are much more reliable than using the complex simultaneous equations model. In a simple way, if I try to explain this, yt is affecting, yt causes xt, xt may be affecting yt if this, if the relation is bi this relation is bidirectional. Now the lag of yt, which is yt minus 1, is affecting yt. Moreover, the lag of xt, which is xt minus 1, is also affecting xt. xt minus 1, now the, the thing which is there in war is, the lag of xt minus 1 is also affecting yt and yt minus 1 affecting xt. So we get the whole system of equations which you can see here. So yt in its own lag and lags of another independent variable. 
xt its own lag and the lag of another independent variables zt its own lag and the lag of another independent variable now let's try to carry out this particular thing in eviews for this we'll be going in eviews file we are having three variables consumption export gdp we assume that this all of them are stationary at first difference the first thing which you have to do is establishing the stationarity in these variables the second thing which we have to do is uh, finding out the optimal lag length so click all of them with the help of control button right click open as var we are not going to do any interpretation of var model right now but we have to go in the var environment to identify the optimal lag Click OK. Now from here only you go in view, leg structure, leg length criteria. Make it to click OK. And you'll get the results. Now how to interpret this? It's quite simple. The thing which you should remember is lower the better. Smaller is beautiful. Right? Now you can see here in case of Akai K information criterion, the lowest is at two at lag one. This is lag one and it's the value. So the optimal lag which is which can be used in our model is lag one. Now there are many criterions which we can consider here. Log L, LR, FP, EIC, SC, and inquiry. Now the software on its own generates the optimal lag by indicating it by asterisks. You can see asterisks which are present. So according to the program, this optimal lag is one. Most of the time, they will tally with each other. But in case of differences, that is some asterisks are at lag two and some asterisks are at lag one, you will go with the popular method where the asterisks are more. Again, I'll go back in estimate. We know that the optimal lag is one. But for our understanding purpose, we are just keeping it two. You can make this one. But to understand the war model in a better way, I am converting this lag into two. Click OK. And I will get the results. Now, the first thing which you have to understand here is that these are the coefficients and these are the standard error. When I divide coefficients with a standard error, I get the T statistics. So the first causality test which which you have to consider here is this one if the value of this code if this value is more than plus or minus 1.96 then this term is significant what these terms are let's try to understand consumption is a dependent variable which is affected by consumption one consumption minus two export minus one export minus two gdp so this is the first equation considering consumption as a dependent variable this is second this is third. You can very well copy this control A, copy and take it on the word file. So first thing which we copied here is a lag length. The second thing which we are copying here is this one. But to interpret this thing is a very herculean task. Why not we make the things simple? For this, we will go in proc, make system, order by variable. It will give me three sets of equations, consumption and its lag, export lag, GDP lag. Export, its lag are here. You can see here. So three sets of equation, you got it. This is exactly like this set of equations which we had created in the theory. Fine, let's go back. Now let's try to understand. Okay. After this, you will have to run estimate. There are many methods by which you can estimate the co uh, the p-value of these coefficients. But at present, we will keep things simple. We will make it OLS, click OK. We will get the p-value of all the coefficients. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, these terms are significant. You can see here, neither of the terms are significant because most of them are having p-values more than 0 0.05 only one term 
this and this are near to 0 0.05 but still they are insignificant fine you can scroll a little and you can see that it will form three sets of equation one considering consumption second export third gdp it will give the statistics related to all these equations r square adjusted r square durbin watson you can very well copy this and take it on the word file because this is a first causality test which we are running and our interpretation will be based on this now we want to conduct the second causality test for this you will again have to go in the environment of e views i'll minimize this from here many times researchers get confused in the environment okay let's try to understand the view options in this are completely different from here and here right i want to go in view leg structure and i'll carry out granger causality block exogeneity test from here this is a second causality test which i want to do and it'll give me the output you can very well copy this right click copy and take it on the word file this is a second causality test our interpretation will come from this p values what are the null hypothesis let's try to understand all the the lagged coefficients of gdp let me correct the spelling all the lagged coefficients of gdp are not causing consumption this is not causing consumption the alternative is all the lagged coefficients of gdp are causing consumption you can see that the p value of 1 2 3 4 and 5 is less than 0 0.05 and therefore they are significant so consumption is affected by the lags of gdp export is affected by the lags of consumption and the lags of gdp gdp is affected by the lags of consumption lag of exports now we will write this interpretation as basically this is a just a minute granger causality also known as block exogeneity test so as the p value of the granger causality block exogeneity test is less than 5% level of significance we reject null which means that there is a significant effect of all the legs of gdp on consumption now you can summarize this result here in this table you can see that there is a dependent variable consumption export and gdp this is the dependent variable and these are the t statistics export and gdp both are insignificant at first and second line this is according to the t statistics first table first causality and we saw that all of them were insignificant but in case of second causality gdp was significant consumption and gdp was significant that is lags of consumption and gdp were affecting exports Legs of export and consumption were affecting GDP. Most of the time, they tally with each other. The next test we will have to carry out now. The next test is Wald coefficient test. We will go here and activate the Wald coefficient test. Now here, we are writing that the legs of GDP C1 is equal to C2 is equal to 0. Click OK. And well, I'll get the answer. You can keep the, you can copy this, and you can take it in the word file. Copy, word file. So this is the third causality test which we are carrying out. Our null hypothesis is lag of consumption are not jointly influencing consumption. Alternative is lag of consumption are jointly influencing consumption. C1 and C2 were the lags of. Let us check what this lags of where of which term so you can see here c1 and c2 are the coefficients of consumption minus one and consumption minus two and our null is they are not affecting the consumption and we got the output according to the wald coefficient test so here you can see as the p-value of this test is more than 0 0.05, we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that the lag of consumption are not affecting consumption. We can carry out the same test 
and we can check is are the legs of C3 and C4 affecting consumption or not. Again, we can go, go from here, view. Rather, we will have to go from this environment, view, coefficient diagnostics, world coefficient test. And here, we will write down C3 is equal to C4 equal to 0. Click OK and you will get the answer. So this is a third causality test which we have conducted. We can write it down here. This is a third causality test. Now we have to carry out the fourth causality test. So what's the whole concept? Let's try to understand. Say for example, there are two variables yt and xt affecting each other with the distributed legs. This relation can very well be, be captured with bar model. But it may be possible that yt causes xt, xt causes yt, there must be a bidirectional feedback causality among the variables or this, these two, two variables are completely independent of each other. To carry out the Granger causality test, this concept was given by Granger. It is necessary that xt and yt should be stationary. If not, make them stationary and then only apply the Granger causality test. Now, how to conduct this test in eViews? Let's see. We'll go in the environment of eViews. Make sure, quick. Group Statistics, Granger Causality Test, click OK. Legs to include, to click OK and you will get the answer. You can very well copy this in the word file which is considered to be the fourth causality test. Let us write it down. Now how to interpret this? Let us try to understand. Export does not Granger cause consumption. Consumption does not Granger cause export. One thing which researchers should always remember is all of them are null. There is no alternative hypothesis here. All of them are null. Export does not Granger cause consumption. If this is rejected, it means that export Granger cause consumption. You have to do the interpretation according to the p-value which is there, which is generated here. All of them are having p-value which is more than 0 0.05. But the thing which you should, which we can see here is this one. The null is GDP does not Granger cause consumption. Alternative is GGP does Granger cause consumption. As the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject null hypothesis which means that GDP does Granger cause consumption. Now there are many coefficients in our model and many of them are insignificant. So we will have to reduce this equation from a very general to a very specific model. So for this, we will have to carry out the first test, which is the Wald coefficient test. We'll go from here, activate this Wald coefficient test, click here. And the null hypothesis is that the coefficients are, all these coefficients are equal to zero. I've already written this thing to save the time. C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C3 is equal to zero. In other words, model does not exist. The, all, the, all these coefficients are equal to zero. I'll copy this. I'll take it in the this window. Control V. So C1 is equal to C2 is equal to all of them are equal to zero. Click OK. I got the result. Now this is most desirable that we are rejecting the null hypothesis which means that at least one of the coefficient is significant. If the, this p-value was more than 0 0.05, neither of these coefficients are significant. But there is a hope which we are getting it from here. So we can say that as the p-value of this test is less than 0 0.05, at least one coefficient is significant. So I can again take this in the word file, can copy, and I'll take it into the word file. Basically, now I what I want to do is I want to go from general general model to specific model. So we can write down the interpretation like this. The null is all the coefficients are equal to zero. 
but the p value of uh, this test is less than 0 0.05 which is less than 5% level of significance we reject null hypothesis which means that there is at least one coefficient which is significant now we want to take those terms which may be significant so for this we will again go back here in proc mix system order by variable estimate click ok i'll pick up those terms which are nearer to 0 0.05 and we may take a chance let's say for example c2 and c5 are significant okay we want to see that we c2 and c5 are which terms so again i'll go here and c2 is the lag of the consumption and c5 is of gdp let us take this in our model So after removing all other variables from the equation, from in this window only you can edit it. And now you can say consumption is equal to C2, consumption minus 2 plus C5, GDP, GDP minus 1 plus C7. Estimate. Again, it will generate a window. And I'll got the answer. The results are quite good. You can see here as the p-value is less than 0 0.05, these terms are significant. Now we will have to carry out the residual testing of this model. So for this, I'll go in view, residual diagnostics, possibly we will have to go from another window, just a minute. Now this is a reduced form of the model. We'll have to carry out the residual analysis. We brought this, so we'll go in view, residual test and autocorrelation LM test. Click OK. Legs to include. Let us specify this. Let us keep this thing as three only. Click OK. You got the answer three lakhs i'll copy this and i'll take it into the word file so our interpretation will be you can see here the p-value this p-value it is less than 0 0.05 here also it's less than 0 0.05 null hypothesis is there is no presence of serial correlation alternative is there is a presence of serial correlation so as the p-value is less than five percent of a level of significance we reject null hypothesis which means that there is a presence of serial correlation now we are carrying out the residual analysis you can also copy the specific model which we had generated here you can simply copy it for reporting purpose here now we'll carry out the second residual test so for, for carrying out the normality test again i'll go in this window view residual test normality test the test which we will be conducting is Cholesky of covariance, Lutica Paul. Click OK. We got the answer. You can very well copy this. Right click and copy it in the word file. Click OK. Now let's see how to try to uh, how to interpret this output. Component one, two, and three. Component one is for consumption. Two is for export. Three is for GDP. As the p-value of all this is more than 0 0.05 so residuals are normally distributed so we get the output for skewness also and kurtosis also but the important thing which we have to see is the overall the overall p value is more than 0 0.05 so jointly residuals in var system are normally distributed we will write here as jointly so technically the interpretation will be written as as the p-value of jark para is more than this value the lower one is more than 0 0.05 so jointly residuals in bar system are normally distributed now we'll have to carry out the next test that is a test for heteroscedasticity for this again we'll go in view residual test white heteroscedasticity no cross terms and we got the result again you can copy this in the word file now what will be the interpretation the interpretation will come from here you'll have to see the p value of this one this p value it's more than 0 0.05 so as the p value of the white's test is zero po is more than five percent level of significance we fail to reject null hypothesis which means that residuals are homo scadastic now the next thing which we want to do is variance decomposition so in econometrics and other applications of multivariate time series analysis, a variance decomposition or the forecast error variance decomposition is used to aid in the interpretation of vector autoregression model once it has been fitted. 
The variance decomposition indicates the amount of information each variable contributes to the other variable in the that's the amount of information each variable is contributing to the other variables in the auto regression. It determines how much of the forecast air variance of each of the variables can be explained by the exogenous shocks to the other variables. For this, we will have to again go in the environment of e views. So, you can go in variance decomposition from the last window of the heteroscedastity test directly view. Variance decomposition. It will ask me that you want table, multiple graphs, combined graphs, stacked graphs. These are the decompositions which are required. Keep the periods 5 and click OK. You will get the answer. Now, you can copy this table into the Word file again. If you want to represent this thing in the form of graph, you can again go back variance decomposition and make this multiple graphs. Click OK and you will get the graph. Now, how to interpret this? Let's try to understand. I have already copied the output here. Basically, you can see that the consumption and its 5 lags 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the value which I am getting it from here. Consumption. Minus 1, consumption, minus 2. Okay. Export, minus 1, minus 2. So, these are the export and its 5 legs. GDP and its 5 legs. Consumption, again, export and GDP. Okay. Consumption, now this time this values are taken. Export. 1, 2. Now, the thing which you have to see here is that the total of this variance decomposition in the row wise, it, the total will always be 100%. How to interpret this? Let's try to understand. Increase in export by 1 unit, decrease the, decreases the consumption by 827 unit. Interpretation is same as regression analysis. Now, how to do the interpretation of this variance decomposition? 1 and 2 is a short run forecast, 3, 4 and 5 is a long run forecast. So, in short run, 100% forecast variance in consumption is explained by itself. You can see, it is not, uh, the variance there is, the percentage is very less. It is 8% and 6%. But when we go for the long run, so, this means that the other variables have a strong exogenous influence. We can also say that these variables are weakly endogenous. In long run, forecast error, error variance by export and GDP is increasing. It is increasing. Little bit it is increasing. Okay. Now, let us talk about the export. 79% in 1 lakh and it is decreasing. So, period 1, 2 is a short run forecast. Period 3, 4, 5 is a long run forecast. So, in short run, 79% forecast variance in export is explained by itself. So, other variables in the mo model have a weak influence on consumption. Quite good. This means that the other variables are a strong and exogenous influence. So, we can say that these variables are weakly endogenous. In long run, forecast, variance around, uh, forecast error variance by consumption and GDP is increasing. You can see here. This means that the consumption is a very strong predictor in the export. Okay. So, the thing which we have to understand here is that the consumption and there are 5 lakhs. If the variance division is more, then the influence of this variable is there in long run or short run, we will, we will be able to know. Now, in case of consumption, over the long time period, there is no uh, influence of export or GDP. But when I talk about export, there is some contribution coming from consumption. You can see 46 uh, in case of uh, uh, exports. In GDP, in long run, 14% is coming from export. Moreover, 77 is per coming from consumption in long run. Now we will carry out the impulse response function. Let us try to understand. 
it explains the reaction of an endogenous variable to one of the innovations. It is useful in empirical causal analysis and policy effectiveness analysis. It tracks the importance of one variable on another. It traces the effect on present and future values of the endogenous variable on one standard deviation shock to one of the innovations that if we give one shock. In signal processing, the impulse response of a dynamic system is its output when presented when a brief input signal is called an impulse. Let us see that how we can carry out this in views. For this, we will have to go in the environment of views. I will minimize this. So for this, we will have to go in view, impulse response. Now we will have to specify that what are the impulses which we want to see. So I want to see the impulses, consumption and its responses. So I will keep this here as export and GDP. Click OK and I will get the answer. We will have to make a small correction. Okay, again go back in impulse response and make this as analytical as it as it appears. Click OK and you got the answer. Now how to interpret this graph? This is response to Cholesky 1 standard deviation innovation plus or minus 2 standard error. Response of export to consumption. Response of GDP to consumption. So this graph gives response of export to one standard deviation shock of consumption and the second one is this graph gives response of GDP to one standard deviation shock of consumption. The blue line should always be between the two red lines. You can see that the graph shows the decrease of export that is uh, its contribution in 1 to 8 period. Similarly, the GDP also decreases in 1 to 8 period. Now, how to interpret this? Technically, how to write the interpretation? Let's see. Response on export. A, a one standard deviation shock to GDP has an import impact on export. We can see that the export is continuously decreasing but is above steady state region, region and remains in positive region. After fifth period, export is in the negative region. Meaning, shocks to GDP will have an asymmetric impact on export both in short run and long run. Response on consumption. A one standard deviation shock to GDP has impact on consumption. We can see that the consumption is continuously decreasing but is above steady state region and remains in positive region. After fifth period, consumption is in the negative region. Meaning, shocks to GDP will have an asymmetric impact on consumption both in short run and long run. Now we will calculate the autoregressive and MA routes. Now what these routes are? The routes view displays the inverse routes of the AR and MA characteristics polynomial. The routes may be displayed as a graph or as a table by selecting the appropriate radio button. The graph views plots the routes in the complex plane where the horizontal axis is a real part and the vertical axis is an imaginary part of each route. For the stability of the VAR model, remember this last point. For the stability of the VAR model, all the points should lie inside the circle. Now let us see how we can carry out this in E views. So we will go in view, leg structure, AR roots graph, and we get the value. We can see that one dot is outside the circle. Now, how we'll interpret this? Let's understand. If the estimated ARMA process is a covariance, is a stationary, then the all AR roots should lie inside the unit circle. If the estimated ARMA process is invert invertible, then all MA roots should lie inside the unit, unit circle. The table view displays all roots in the order of decreasing modulus, that is a square root of the sum of the square of the real and imaginary parts. So now let us generate the table. We will go here, view, leg structure and table and we will get the value. The important thing which we, we should see here is they are in the decreasing order but one of them is having the value more than one. Now how to interpret this? Let's try to understand. One root value is more than one which means that they are outside the unit circle which we have seen in the uh, in the graph also this was outside the units outside the unit circle and the var is not stationary 
this will have impact on impulse response standard errors and they are no longer valid no longer valid now i'll have to carry out one more test and that is correlogram residual test correlograms you can have a graph of it now how to interpret this graph let's try to understand all the dotted points should not cross the dotted lines this should not cross so if this is there then we don't have any we don't have any autocorrelation for more videos on econometrics you can follow me on my channel you can kindly kindly subscribe to my channel you can follow me on linkedin and twitter